Level 0. It always starts innocent. A few gentle flakes drifting down from a quiet sky. It is peaceful. It is beautiful. It is the kind of weather that makes people pull out their phones and post cozy captions. But behind that soft curtain of snow is a warning. Winter is only getting started. Light snowfall usually brings less than a few centimeters of accumulation. It is barely enough to cover the ground and certainly not enough to cancel school. Kids might cheer, but buses still roll and the world keeps moving. Roads get slick, windshields frost over, and drivers pretend they remember how to break on ice. Scientifically, snow forms when water vapor in the clouds freezes directly into ice crystals. These crystals cluster snowflakes and fall when they become heavy enough. Under the right conditions, each flake forms a unique six-sided structure. But let us be honest, by the time it hits your sleeve, it is just cold and wet. Light snowfall can still cause issues. It reduces visibility just enough to mess with traffic. It sticks to sidewalks and turns into black ice overnight. And when the temperature hovers near freezing, that slush becomes a perfect recipe for twisted ankles and minor chaos. Still, this is the friendly face of winter, a calm before anything serious hits. No wind, no whiteout, just a quiet whisper from the sky that colder days are coming. It lulls people into a false sense of comfort. But just a few degrees colder and a little more moisture in the clouds and things start to shift. Because when the snow picks up and the wind follows close behind, the real storm begins to take shape and travel is about to get a lot more dangerous. Level 1. So the snow starts falling harder. The air thickens with white streaks and the ground begins to disappear. Welcome to Level 1. This is no longer a winter postcard. This is a snowstorm. A snowstorm is what happens when snowfall intensifies beyond a peaceful dusting. Roads vanish under inches of powder, visibility drops, and your car becomes a sled with steering issues. It is not a full whiteout yet, but you will definitely miss your turn if you blink too long. Snowstorms form when warm, moist air from one region meets cold, dry air from another. That clash fuels clouds thick with ice crystals. When temperatures drop below freezing all the way from the clouds to the surface, you get snow instead of sleet or rain. And it keeps coming. During a solid snowstorm, accumulation can reach several centimeters an hour. Traffic slows to a crawl. Flights get delayed. And suddenly everyone remembers they forgot to buy salt, shovels, and groceries. For outdoor workers and emergency crews, it becomes a battle to keep things moving. Not all snowstorms are created equal. Some pass quickly. Others linger. The longer it lasts, the heavier the toll. And the real danger is not just the snow, it is the hidden layer of ice underneath, waiting to catch tires and footsteps off guard. It is beautiful from the window. It is brutal on the roads. And once the wind joins the party, things get complicated fast. Wind changes everything. It turns drifting snow into blinding sheets and creates snow banks taller than your car. And when strong gusts begin to howl through the streets, piling snow into frozen walls and dropping the temperature even further, the storm takes on a new name. That is when you have crossed into Level 2. Level 2. Now the snow gets serious. This is not just a storm anymore. This is a winter storm. And when it hits, you feel it in your bones. A winter storm takes everything from Level 1 and cranks it up. Heavier snow, stronger winds, colder air. It is not just a traffic problem now, it is a systems problem. Roads close, power flickers, and if you are outside too long, the cold starts biting back. The key difference is the wind. Once snow is driven sideways by gusts, it becomes more than just a slippery nuisance. It cuts visibility and makes shoveling feel like a losing battle. Wind chills drop far below freezing and exposed skin can start to freeze in minutes. Airports shut down, delivery trucks stop running, even trains face delays. And for anyone working outdoors, frostbite and hypothermia are real threats. The human body is not built to handle wind chills that make freezing temperatures feel twice as cold. This is when schools start closing before the first snowflake falls. Utility companies brace for overloaded systems. Trees and power lines snap under the weight of frozen buildup. And small towns suddenly feel very far away from help. Winter storms can stretch across entire regions, lasting for days. Snow piles up faster than it can be cleared. Emergency services get overwhelmed. And that warm, cozy feeling you had during level zero? It is long gone, but we are still just getting started. When the snowfall does not let up, when the gusts grow stronger and the sky turns into a swirling wall of white, something more intense begins to form. Because when visibility drops below 400 meters and stays there, you are no longer in a storm. You are stepping into a severe snowstorm. Level 3. At level 3, winter stops playing games. A severe snowstorm is not just cold and inconvenient. It is the kind of weather that takes over your town and dares you to fight back. This is when heavy snowfall meets strong gusting winds and stays around long enough to grind everything to a halt. Snow falls faster than plows can clear it. Roads vanish beneath fresh layers of powder, and visibility collapses to just a few hundred meters or less. Power lines buckle under the weight of snow and ice. Entire neighborhoods go dark. People dig out their flashlights and start wondering if they have enough food to last the weekend. In some cases, 
backup generators become lifelines. In a severe snowstorm, the biggest threat is not just the snow itself. It is what the snow takes down with it. Emergency response slows. Ambulances struggle to get through. Crews working nonstop find themselves overwhelmed. When help is needed, it might be hours away or not coming at all. In 2008, a massive winter system swept across China just before the Lunar New Year. It stranded over 100 million travelers. Power grids failed. Train lines froze. What was supposed to be the country's biggest holiday turned into a nationwide crisis. Storms like these bring a specific kind of silence. Streets empty. Cities slow down. Even sound feels muffled under all that snow. But there is one thing still missing from this storm. A key ingredient that turns chaos into whiteout. Wind. Sustained, brutal, and constant. When the snow keeps falling and the winds cross a certain threshold, you are no longer in a snowstorm. You are in a full-scale blizzard. And from here, there is no going back. Level 4. This is where the storm earns its name. Level 4 is the true blizzard. Not just snow and wind, but a sustained and dangerous assault on everything caught in its path. To officially qualify as a blizzard, the conditions must meet three brutal criteria. Winds must blow at over 56 kilometers per hour. Visibility must drop below 400 meters. And it must all last for at least three hours straight. That is not a passing storm. That is nature locking you in and throwing away the key. The wind is what makes this different. It does not just blow snow around. It sculpts the landscape into something alien. Drifts pile higher than cars. Road signs disappear. The world becomes a swirling white wall. Direction is lost. Landmarks vanish. You could be 20 steps from your front door and never find it. During a blizzard, simply going outside becomes a calculated risk. Exposure can lead to frostbite in under 30 minutes. Visibility is so low that driving is no longer dangerous. It is impossible. In 1977, a historic blizzard hit the Great Lakes region of the United States and Canada. Winds slammed into cold air already heavy with snow. Buffalo, New York recorded snowdrifts two stories tall. Cities shut down. Rescue teams lost their way. Over 20 people died just trying to walk home. The silence is gone. It is replaced by a constant roar snow, wind, and ice working together to erase the line between land and sky. But the worst part is this. The snow may stop falling, yet the danger is not over. Because what happens when the wind alone is enough to create a blizzard from nothing at all? That is where we head next. Into the whiteout that rises from the ground. Level 5. At level 5, the snow has already fallen. The sky might even be clear, but what happens on the ground is anything but calm. This is a ground blizzard, and it turns stillness into chaos. Unlike a classic blizzard, a ground blizzard does not need new snow to fall. All it takes is wind. Strong, sustained gusts that lift loose snow from the surface and whip it into the air with incredible force. It creates a full whiteout without a single snowflake falling from the clouds. From a distance, the horizon may look peaceful, but step into it, and you are swallowed by a blinding swirl. Snow moves sideways at high speed, twisting in unpredictable patterns. Visibility drops instantly. People have become disoriented within feet of their own homes. In open landscapes like the Arctic tundra or flat farmlands, Ground blizzards are especially dangerous. There are no buildings or trees to block the wind. It races unobstructed across vast fields, picking up speed and snow with every kilometer. Vehicles slide off roads. Pilots lose visual contact with the runway. Even GPS can become unreliable in certain conditions. Snow swirls so densely it can mess with navigation systems. Ground blizzards have caused multi-car pileups and flight delays stretching across continents. It is a silent kind of danger. The snow is already there. It is the wind that changes everything. The storm is beneath your feet, not above your head. And just when you think you have seen the worst of winter, the temperature drops even further. Visibility becomes the least of your problems when machines start freezing. Skin burns from cold alone, and the air itself feels heavy with ice. Because what comes next is not just cold, it is survival against the polar extreme. Level 6 Level 6 is not about snow falling from the sky, it is about everything freezing to a stop. This is a polar blizzard. It is brutal, relentless, and terrifying not because of what you see, but because of what you feel. Temperatures in a polar blizzard can drop below minus 30 degrees Celsius. In that kind of cold, your eyelashes freeze together, metal snaps, batteries die within minutes, and bare skin? It begins to burn, then go numb, then turn black if left exposed too long. Now add high winds and dense snow to that. The storm becomes a wall. Visibility can vanish entirely. You cannot see where you are, you cannot hear over the wind, and you cannot stop moving for too long or your own body becomes a threat to itself. In Siberia and parts of northern Canada, polar blizzards can stretch across hundreds of kilometers. There are stories of vehicles freezing in place before the driver even finishes turning the key. In remote towns, people string guide ropes between buildings because walking from one door to the next without them 
could mean getting lost forever. Technology does not help much here. Machinery locks up. Rescue operations become nearly impossible. The cold seeps into every crack, turning engines into frozen sculptures. This level is not about inconvenience. It is about survival. Every step outside is calculated. Every breath matters. Because in a polar blizzard, nature is not testing your endurance. It is testing your limits. But what if the storm does not stop? What if it keeps building, sweeping across entire nations, burying homes, cutting off entire regions? That is when winter turns historic, and the world begins to remember its most deadly snowstorms. That is level 7, and it buries everything. Level 7. This is not just another storm, it is a super blizzard. This is when winter unleashes its full power, combining extreme snowfall, violent winds, and deadly cold to bury entire communities. These are not forecasts, these are disasters that people remember for generations. One of the deadliest blizzards in recorded history struck Iran in 1972. Over six days, more than three meters of snow fell across wide parts of the country. Entire villages disappeared under the weight. Roads vanished. Help never arrived. When the storm cleared, over 4,000 lives had been lost. A super Super blizzard is not just intense, it is overwhelming. Snowfall can exceed two or even three meters. Winds reach hurricane strength, roofs collapse, people freeze in place, homes are sealed shut by snowdrifts, rescue teams cannot move, communication lines go down, and when temperatures drop far below freezing, even survival inside becomes uncertain. In the United States, the Great Blizzard of 1888 dropped over a meter of snow from New Jersey to Connecticut and brought winds that toppled buildings. More than 400 people died. It led to major changes in how cities prepare for winter, including the decision to move power and phone lines underground. What makes a super blizzard terrifying is how fast it escalates. It turns hours into days, days into isolation, and isolation into tragedy. But as devastating as these events are, they are still local or regional. They strike hard, but they do not spread far. So what happens when multiple blizzards begin to form at once? What if entire nations are hit by wave after wave, paralyzing everything from power to food supply? That is when the storm becomes something bigger, something continental. And it is only getting worse. Level 8. At this level, a single storm is no longer the problem. Multiple blizzards are now colliding across countries, overwhelming systems, and turning cities into frozen islands. This is a continental blizzard outbreak, and it is the point where winter begins to break civilization. Blizzards are usually regional, but sometimes weather patterns line up just right. Jet streams dip low, moisture surges in from the oceans, cold air locks in place, and instead of one storm, you get many. One after another, days apart, no time to recover, no break in between, roads stay closed, snow plows cannot keep up, emergency services stretch thin, power grids begin to fail under the constant weight of ice and demand, grocery stores empty, gas stations run dry, hospitals run low on fuel and supplies, cities become disconnected from each other, rural towns are completely cut off. In 1993, the United States experienced what became known as the storm of the century. It stretched from the Gulf of Mexico to Canada. It dropped snow on 26 states. More than 300 people died. Airports shut down. Millions lost power. And that was from a single system. A true outbreak would be worse. Imagine three or four of those events in close succession, across borders, across continents. Power grids would crash. Communications would fail. The cold would not just be dangerous. It would become deadly on a scale modern society is not prepared for. This level is not about nature reminding us who is in charge. It is about infrastructure unraveling in real time. But storms like this have happened before, not in the news, not in modern history, in the distant past. Because when winter ruled the planet, storms reached a size that shaped continents. And those are the ones that left scars in the Earth itself. Level 9. This is where storms stop being natural disasters and start becoming geological forces. Ice Age storms are not just deadly, they are world-shaping. These are the blizzards that carved valleys, buried continents, and drove entire species to extinction. During the last Ice Age, global temperatures dropped dramatically. Massive ice sheets stretched from the Arctic deep into what is now Europe, Asia, and North America. These frozen giants did not appear overnight. They grew over thousands of years, fed by relentless snowfall and storms of unimaginable scale. Jet streams shifted, oceans cooled, and with every temperature drop, the atmosphere changed. The air held less moisture, but what snow did fall stayed. It piled up season after season. Some of the most intense megastorms in Earth's history formed during these glacial periods. Blizzards likely lasted for weeks. Snowfall was measured not in centimeters, but in meters at a time, and the cold was so deep it froze rivers solid for months. Fossil records suggest herds of mammoths were caught in sudden, violent storms. Whole forests were crushed under 
other sheets of ice. Wind speeds rivaled tropical cyclones, but with temperatures far below freezing. It was not just survival of the fittest, it was survival of the luckiest. These storms helped reshape entire landscapes. Mountains were ground down by glaciers. Lakes were carved by moving ice. The map of the world changed because of the storms that came and never left. But even the ice age had an end. The planet eventually warmed. The glaciers retreated. Life recovered. Now imagine what would happen if that kind of cold returned. Not naturally, but suddenly, triggered by a runaway chain reaction. Because there is one level left, the final scenario, and it is the coldest nightmare of all. Level 10. At the final level, there is no shelter, no escape, and no region spared. A global whiteout is the ultimate expression of winter. Not a season, not a storm, but a world locked in ice. This scenario is based on a theory known as Snowball Earth. It suggests that hundreds of millions of years ago, the entire planet entered a, a deep freeze. Oceans turned to slush, glaciers spread from the poles to the equator, and blizzards raged across every continent for millions of years. In a global whiteout, snowfall never stops. Sunlight reflects off the bright surface and fails to warm the planet. Temperatures plummet far below anything modern humans have ever endured. Ecosystems collapse, forests vanish, crops cannot grow, the food chain breaks at every level. Wind patterns become violent and unstable. With every storm, ice spreads farther. Cities are buried. Power grids shut down permanently. Communications fail. Planes cannot fly. Ships cannot sail. Civilization is pushed to the edge, not by a single moment, but by an unending freeze. Even deep oceans begin to cool. Coral reefs die. Rainforests turn to frost. Humanity is forced underground, or south, or nowhere at all. This is not just a colder planet. It is an entirely different one. Covered in snow, choked by silence, and wrapped in storms that never end. Could this really happen again? Some scientists believe it would take a perfect storm of conditions, a shift in orbit, a drop in greenhouse gases, a volcanic trigger, or an atmospheric collapse. Right now, it remains theoretical, but the scars left behind in the rock suggest it has already happened once, and nature never forgets how to repeat itself. From drifting flakes to a frozen earth, this is winter in all its power. But one question still remains. What would it take to survive it? 